So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today I'd like uh, to clear up a little confusion that many hobby microscopists have. It's about magnification and uh, in order to explain it to you I'd like to read out a question of one of my viewers to you and uh, then I'm going to explain a little bit the question what the problem is about and uh, here we go. I have searched, read, watched videos and I cannot find an answer to what I'm sure is a relatively simple question. I find formulas for calculating screen resolution. That's not what I'm seeking. When one is using a microscope camera and for example the user presents an image saying that it was taken at 500 times, how are they arriving at that? If I'm using a camera that has a 0.5 adapter, in my case it's a 14 megapixel USB 3 camera and a 40 times objective, how do I describe the magnification? The software defaults to a 10% zoom. Is the zoom the multiplier? What magnification would my image be using as a 40 times objective with a 40% zoom? As you can tell, I'm totally confused. Uh, I'd like to know the actual magnification from the camera is without the interpolation from the zoom and how to properly express both. Well, thank you very much for the question and I fully understand that you're confused because as you have probably realized yourself already, Putting a magnification in a micrograph, in a picture, is actually something that you should not do because in many cases this value is going to be wrong and I need to explain this a little bit. I know it sounds a little bit very provocative if I say that, uh, but I think uh, the, the, the problem is, is that many people confuse two different types of magnifications. The so-called magnification, it's called magnification, and the other one is called linear magnification or lateral magnification and both of these concepts really mean something quite different and I would like to explain it now in this video. So we all know um, that uh, the magnification that you get when looking through a microscope can be calculated by multiplying the magnification of the objective times the eyepiece. So for example in this case I've got a 4 times objective times 10 times eyepiece gives me a total magnification of 40 times. But when I take a picture with a camera now, what magnification does the picture now have? You have to understand that the magnification when looking through the eyepieces is the, called magnification and the magnification when uh, taking a picture of a camera and when displaying the picture on the screen or in a book, then this is called linear or lateral magnification and these are totally two different concepts. The camera itself does not have a magnification. I need to explain this a little bit. When we look at magnification and it has now a 40 times magnification and this means that the image that I see when looking through the microscope will look 40 times larger from a viewing distance of 250 millimeters. Uh, this was standardized some time ago and I think in the 19th century the viewing distance was standardized to be 250 millimeters. And a 40 times magnification now means that it will be, uh, I will see the image as if it were 40 times closer uh, to my, you do the math, uh, 250 divided uh, by 40 uh, gives you the millimeter. So it's quite uh, close in front of the eye. And with a 100 times magnification, 10 times objective, 10 times eyepiece, yeah, the object would be one, uh, 2.5 millimeters uh, in front of my eye. And this is uh, the size that I would then see it through the microscope. But the camera itself, um, yeah, makes a picture. And the magnification that is written on the picture, the linear magnification, or also known as the lateral magnification, is calculated by a simple division. You're dividing the size of the image on paper by the size of the original specimen. And this value, of course, is going to be much larger than, for example, 40 times. And not only that, it depends on the size of the picture. So the size that the camera produces of the image that the camera produces depends on how big your screen is. It also depends on how much you zoom in on the screen. And the, ima uh, the image size also depends on the number of pixels that your camera has, on the image sensor uh, size, um, on the pixel density and so on. Also of course on the magnification on, of, uh, of the adapter and so on. There's so many variables and so many factors but ultimately um, all of those uh, factors and variables don't really matter so much because it all depends on the size of the final image being displayed. And then you can actually have magnification that goes 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 times on screen if you simply make it large enough. 
Yeah? But this magnification has nothing to do uh, with the magnification as uh, looking through the eyepiece. So basically to answer your question, do not put a magnification value on uh, your micrographs, on your pictures. And I've seen this myself so many times, even in the textbook of my children, in the biology textbook of my children, they put a magnification um, into the corner of an image. And I don't know now, does this actually now mean that they have used um, a 500 times magnification magnification using the objective and an adapter um, or did they actually mean to say that it in the pic, in the book it's now 500 times larger than in real life that would be the correct actually uh, the correct way of interpreting it uh, but I'm not quite sure and uh, I would say that one should generally avoid uh, putting a magnification a total magnification value um, in a micrograph so I want to show you now that magnification on screen is indeed indeed dependent uh, on the display size here the magnification is 750 uh, times because the diameter of the image is 75 millimeters and the original size of the paramecium is 0.1 millimeter and of course if you change now the size on the screen then this of course also changes the magnification and uh, this uh, shows that there is no single magnification for images unless they're printed. Now many of my viewers in my main uh, Microbe Hunter channel um, requested that I please include the magnification in the corner of, of my videos because they would like to know which objective they should use to get a similar image and uh, I was I'm always very hesitant of doing that because a magnification value really does not mean anything and sometimes I'm zooming in more for the specimen to fill in the image so it is really actually quite meaningless um, so what I have done now is I've included uh, simply the objective that I've been using um, to get a certain image but this does not mean that another user will get the same image uh, with the same objective because they have a different camera system yeah, and a different sensor size and a different resolution and so on. Yeah? Um, so the recommendation that I have is, is if you want to include, include any type of size measurement then do include a scale bar because a scale bar will resize no matter how big your image is. So if you make your image larger then the scale bar is also going to be larger and therefore the, it's always going to be correct. The disadvantage of course with a scale bar is well what does it tell you 10 micrometers? Yeah, it's still very difficult to imagine because you don't have a yeah, real world connection and it's difficult to make uh, yeah, the relationship uh, visible. Um, in any case, that's the best that we have. Yeah? Um, so uh, to go back uh, to your question here, yeah, um, I can only say yeah, many of the problems that you're formulating on uh, in, your, um, in your questions is, uh, well, they don't, uh, I understand them, but they just ignore them um, and uh, forget about all of the, uh, the camera resolution and all of these things and simply do not include a magnification in, in the corner um, of uh, your image. You avoid the problem right away because uh, the magnification is going to be wrong anyway as soon as you resize the picture and yeah. The next thing I would like to say is, is if you do want to make scale bars, I did make separate videos of uh, that um, and then you need a so-called micrometer slide and then it's very easy for you to measure out uh, the distances um, and uh, yeah and it's much easier for you to then make a scale bar. Well I did I do hope that this kind of clarified a little bit uh, uh, the question here. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.